Good morning, sewing friends. I woke up this morning and decided I was going to push myself and finally finish my Kimball Bomber jacket. I first told you about this project way back on September 2nd. I had two other viewers, Kim and Amy, join me in making the Cashmere Up Bomber jacket and it was so much fun. We met every Saturday via Zoom to talk about our progress and support each other. And while Kim and Amy finished their jackets in about four weeks, it's taken me almost four months to finish mine. So what took me so long? I'm actually a little embarrassed that it took me four months or almost four months to complete my Kimball bomber jacket. But here it is, and I'm glad that I did get it completed. The thing that hung me up was the sleeves. Now, I don't know if the cashmere block is just made with a short sleeve on all their patterns, or if I happen to just have long arms or a combination of the two, but I do find that I always need to add additional length on the sleeves when I make up a cashmere pattern. For instance, here's the first Stanton hoodie I made, and as you can see, the sleeve here comes, you know, a good inch and a half, two inches from my wrist. And so knowing that, I went ahead and I added an extra inch on the pattern. Now, if I would have been the type of sewist that I should be, I would have done a muslin or I would have done a little bit more measuring, but instead I just sort of put the pattern up to my shoulder and, and, and thought, okay, here's where the seam allowance is, here's where the rib's going to be. And so I added the inch and then I'm using a rib knit for the cuff, which is about three inches, and I just assumed that this would be long enough. Well, it turns out it wasn't. So I had gotten through the process of doing the welt pockets, which I have to admit I was quite proud of, okay? Two welt pockets, and I had gotten the bodice and the back done. Then I had to add the sleeves, these beautiful leather sleeves. I've never sewn with leather before, and I've heard that maybe it's tricky or it's a little scary, but I didn't find it that way at all. I mean, it cuts like butter, it doesn't unravel. The only thing is though, you need a separate presser foot so that the leather will feed through your machine and not stick. But other than that, I didn't find anything scary or difficult about sewing the sleeves at all. Then I did the try on and the sleeves are really, really short. And that really kind of put the brakes on everything. I think that the jacket stayed in my closet for a good couple months because I couldn't figure out what to do. I didn't want to go forward because I knew the sleeves weren't going to work. And because they were leather, they were somewhat expensive. I didn't have enough fabric left over to cut two more sleeves. Um, and I didn't want to take a whole day trip down to San Francisco to buy more, which was going to be expensive anyways, and then drive all the way back. So I just kind of let it sit there for a while while I thought about it. Now, a lot of people gave me some great ideas on, on what to do with it, and I'll, I'll show you what I eventually ended up doing. So anyhow, I then moved forward on it. I figured, okay, let me just think about what I'm gonna do with the sleeves, and I went ahead and moved forward, and I guess the next bugaboo I had was doing the zipper. I went ahead and installed, installed? <laughs> I sewed in a metal zipper and it is actually encased in a facing, which was kind of a new thing with me. I'd never done that before. And I have to say the finishing techniques that um, come with the instructions for the bomber jacket really are nice. This was a very enjoyable sew. And I wish that, you know, the sleeves had turned out the proper length that I had done my proper due diligence in measuring and making sure they were long enough because this really is a fun jacket to sew. So anyhow, I was reading the instructions for the zipper and they said to just go ahead and you know, that you would have excess and to just cut it off. 
Well, I had never really, I didn't think you could cut off a metal zipper. And so of course I go to Google and I find out because, you know, I always have to do that with zippers. It's like, okay, invisible zipper versus, you know, your standard zipper. One you have to shorten at the bottom, the other have to you shorten at the top. So, and I can't remember that. So I was pretty sure you couldn't just cut off a metal zipper. And I was right because they have this zipper stop here at the top. And if you were to just cut this off and did not have the zipper stop, then your zipper would just keep going and would come off the zipper completely. So then I read that you needed to remove this zipper top here, or the zipper stop, and then remove the teeth up into, and so that the zipper is the desired length. And then you needed to add a new zipper top or zipper stop. So I had to go ahead and order that and wait for that to come in because I needed to shorten both of the side pocket zippers as well as the front zipper. And it kind of ended up, I mean, I had to do it with the side zippers, as you can see here in my welt pocket. But it kind of ended up being a moot point for my front zipper because the way it is, it's kind of just enclosed here with the collar and the facing. Now, if I were to make this again, and I do plan on making another one, I will do a better job as far as measuring to make sure that I can go ahead and remove the teeth and add a zipper stop so that it doesn't curve sort of into the seam here. I guess I was, combined with the sleeves not being right and some other stuff, I guess I was a little intimidated because my fear was that I would measure wrong and I would probably, you know, let's say have a zipper stop down here and then I would have nothing but blank zipper all the way up. So I figured I can live with this. It's not perfect, um, but for a first try, I, it's fine. It definitely works. And then the last kind of bugaboo was the lining. And it's lining doesn't really scare me. I've put lining in tons of skirts and I've lined um, some jackets and, and dresses before. But the instructions for the bomber jacket actually have you encase the lining or encase the seams with um, bias tape and I don't know why I would you know I I was reading the instructions and I really wasn't thinking so I ended up just sewing the lining to the jacket so that it was you know part of the seam it was exposed and then I realized oh I shouldn't have done that because just like here I needed to sort of turn it under and then hand stitch it well that in in order to take it out then I had to unpick all this rib knit because it was all sewn together the lining the rib knit and the jacket so I had to unpick it not just on the collar but also all across the bottom of the jacket, which I guess intimidated me a bit because on the bottom here in the corner, when you do this in order to get the casing, you do have to, you can't really tell, but you have to cut into the fabric here and so that you can get this nice 90 degree degree angle. And so you sort of cut into but not through, you know, your little 90 degree angle. And I was afraid that if I were to unpick it, that the fabric will have been, um, that it would have unraveled enough that it would have been hard to get the binding or the rib knit back into the same spot to get that really nice 90 degree angle. So I sort of sat down and said, okay, you need to finish this. I mean, as I said, Kim and Amy, they finished theirs months ago, and I'll put some pictures of theirs because they look really great, and we both, or excuse me, all three of us did a little different, um, a little different something to all our jackets, um, so it's really interesting to see how they all turned out. So anyhow, when I finally decided that if I just slow down and take my time I, I can do anything. There is nothing that can't be fixed. I mean, you know, tailors have to make adjustments all the time. You, you, they have to lengthen, they have to shorten, they have to take in, they have to take out. 
they don't really, and they, I, you know, maybe they do say, oh no, that's something I can't do. But for the most part, they make it work. And so that's what I was going to tell myself. You know, one stitch at a time. If that's what it took, just go ahead and unpick one, then another, <laughs> and then another, and put it together. So I finally got the lining done, and I have to say, I am quite proud of the hand stitching that I did on this lining. I ended up using just the sleeves exactly as they were, as they were cut, and I added the um, rib knit. I don't particularly like the contrast of the two browns, but it's what I had. And then I don't like that this is so big. I mean, my goodness. When I put it on, that's just a very big cuff. So, um... I might, I don't know, I might go ahead and just take it off, shorten it so that I could get a little tighter cuff. I think that would help the overall look if I were to have a tighter cuff rather than this big one. So here's my bomber jacket. The only thing I did different from the instructions is that I added leather sleeves rather than quilting the sleeves. And here's a picture of Kim in her completed bomber jacket. She chose to do the quilting and she said she actually really enjoyed it because it was a technique that she'd never done before, but that it took a long time and it was just, you know, it took a while to do all that quilting. Um, but the sleeves look absolutely gorgeous. And here's Amy's bomber jacket. I'll put some pictures somewhere around here. Amy chose not to do the quilting on her bomber jacket. And I think they both look great. I'll go ahead and show you some more of mine as I went for a walk in our neighborhood park. And you can see what my bomber jacket looks like while I'm wearing it. Would I recommend making the Kimball Bomber jacket and do I plan on making it again? And do I recommend the Cashmere Club? Well, I will definitely be making the bomber jacket again and I definitely recommend the plat pattern. It was such a joy to sew. I really did enjoy it. Now sure, it gave me some problems, but that was my own inhibitions, my own um, fears that kept me from completing it. But each but each task that I did, I really thoroughly enjoyed, and I would make it again simply just for the fun of doing a nice slow sew. Now I don't think I'll do leather jacket or leather sleeves the next time, not because I don't like them or because they were difficult, but because I simply don't need another jacket with leather sleeves. But I think I will do the quilted sleeves, which is in the original instructions, because that's a new technique I've never done before. Now, would I recommend the Cashmere Club? Well, the jury's still out on that. My membership automatically renewed November of this year, so I still have a full year of patterns to sew and to um, decide whether I like the club and if it's worth the annual subscription rate. So that's all for today's video. I will go ahead and see you next time. Bye.